after being um, a Christian for even a long while, you'll discover that your arsenal against the enemy, it, it's not really built up and fortified, that that's another way of the enemy stealing your joy. Today we'd like to talk about that. Um, we'd like to bring to you a question. The question is, what is in your arsenal against the enemy? Let's start with some things we already know. He knows us very well because he attached himself to us, to our lives, while we were in the world for many years. And his primary aim has not changed. To defeat you in everything, in every attempt that you do for the Lord. To bring him the glory. That is his primary aim. And the scriptures say he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's in that order for a reason. Because if he can steal it, it doesn't belong to him. He has to actually take something that does not belong to him. And one of the primary things he steals from the Christian is joy. Once he has stolen your joy, then he, uh, then he, uh, he possesses it. And once he possesses it, then he tries to kill it and then to destroy it, which ultimately his aim, his goal, is to destroy you, to keep you from being all of what God has for you to be. So we're going to go into some of these things, some of these things that he attaches himself to in our lives. One of them is old habits, habits that we have carried into our Christian life, habits that we have not let go of, we have not allowed the Lord to change us in that way so that we no longer have these habits, these old habits, and these same old habits that kept you depressed and not having joy when you were in the world are the same old habits that do the same old things. One of the other things is old weaknesses where we have not built ourselves up in the Lord. And because we have not built ourselves up in the Lord, and, and by reading His Word, praying, seeking His face, uh, just spending time with Him, those are things, and not going to church, not uh, fellowshipping with the saints, praying for one another, these things, and not keeping up with these things, will make your spirit man weaker instead of stronger. The other thing is he knows everything about your family. He's been around a long time, let's face it. So he knows who doesn't like you. He knows who you like. He knows uh, what, to, what, what makes everyone tick as far as uh, and he has no foreknowledge of these things. These are just things he knows just from being around them. He knows these things. He, he's not all-knowing. But the reason why he knows these things is because he has attached himself around your whole family and people that you love and people that you know for so long that he knows these things. He knows just how to get Uncle Robert to say something to tick you off. He knows just how to, to use his arsenal. And part, mostly what's in his arsenal is what we have given him over the years. Um, the other thing is he knows about your likes and dislikes. He knows the things that you enjoy doing. He knows the things that you dislike. And so he harps, harpoons actually in on these things to steal your joy, to rob you of the victory that you have in Jesus Christ. And he knows about the old you. So that's why he revisits us with these things. 
with the things that remind us of how we still resemble that person. And he'll come to us and he'll say, oh, you know what? You used to do such and such. You know you still want to do it. You know you still want to uh, act like this. You know you want to take a drink. You know you want to do this. You know you want to go out with that man or you know you, you like him or you know you like her or whatever. And so he'll revisit these things which are fleshly things and he revisits those things and he tries to let you know that really you have not gone that far away from me you're still kind of hanging around me because if you weren't if you'd gone really far from me where you the way you think you have and closer to god then you wouldn't be having these kinds of thoughts so then he makes us feel like we're not all we should be in Christ, that we are big hypocrites and we uh, are, can never be really holy. We can't really live holy, not living in this world. And everybody's going to know what you've done and how you're trying to look like you've changed. But what it is, he, once he starts putting those things on us and on top of us, next thing you know, we've just fallen down underneath the things that he's put on top of us, really in, in the thoughts of how, what we think about ourselves. And so this is what he tries to do. He tries to wear you down, to make you think that old person will always be that old person. You will never become what God wants you to be because I know you. And so he, he tries to make it seem as though you could never aspire to the relationship with Christ that you really need to have to have victory over him.